G'day fellas, and welcome to a casted game. Spawning in on the north side of the map, playing as the Holy Roman Empire in the color blue, it's Anatand. And on the south side of the map in the color red, playing as the Abbasid Dynasty, we've got Isange. Now, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly. It's probably Sainch. Uh, a little bit of an interesting name. I don't think I've ever seen it before, so I'm not sure exactly who this is. Uh, but we've got Anatan. We know Anatan. Now, this game is a pup, and the reason we're, we're casting this game is because we're scrounging for games right now. I'm looking for any games that I can find. Uh, and so this one was available on Anatan's profile. So I said, thank you, Anatan. I'll, I'll cast that one in. I'll jump in and say good day. Now, I don't know if Anatan watches uh, the videos that we post here, but if he does, Anatan, leave a comment down below. Let everybody know what your socials are, just simply because I can't find you, mate. Now, to be honest, I haven't had a super good look for you, uh, but... Uh, you know, I'm, I'm a regular over on Twitch. I'm always looking there. I reckon people would love to see your gameplay because you're a pretty decent player, mate. And uh, I'm looking forward to seeing what you've got today. So for anybody who doesn't know Anatan, I think uh, Conk 3 plus plus plus, each plus refers to 100 ELO on the top, uh, is quite a good, quite a decent player. Uh, when it comes to Ice Ainge, I don't know about him. I don't know anything about him. I, I, I didn't even look him up. I didn't even look him up. But anyway, let's talk a little bit about this matchup, about what we've got here for ourselves today. So we've got Abbasid Dynasty versus the Holy Roman Empire. A bit of an interesting matchup, just simply because the Holy Roman Empire, they love to go for those men at arms. And the Abbasid Dynasty have got a pretty decent counter to them. They've got the Camel Archers. The Camel Archers is one of the few units available in the Feudal Age that can deal effectively with the uh, the men at arms. Now, it takes a lot of micro. It's quite intensive. But once you get to critical mass, once you get to about, you know, eight or nine camels... It's absolutely fine. Very, very easy to deal with. So that is going to be something that we'll be looking for today. The other thing to note is we have been watching the growth of Fertile Crescent. This is a technology available to the Abbasid Dynasty, which is just on another level. It is kind of crazy how good this technology is. At first glance, you look at it and you're like, mm, yeah, it's okay. It's not about the first town center. It's not even about the second town center. It's about the 15th town center that they're putting down. I'm looking at you, De Muslim. You guys remember that game? We, I think I, I don't. I, I lost count of how many town centers we saw that game, uh, but uh, it definitely seems like people are still trending towards that style of play. Obviously, when it comes to the Abbasid Dynasty, there's a number of ways you could look to play them. You could potentially go for trade. There's a great trading post option uh, for you here. In fact, Trade Wing actually would be very good here, and he has spotted that out. So if he goes for a market in this corner, he could go... No, he went Economic Wing. All right, I got excited. I got a little bit too excited. So we are going to see the stock standard play here. No trade today. Now, over on the other side of the map, we do have a mine work coming down, and it's only going to be with two villagers, which makes me think that it's probably going to be a Castle Age timing. Normally, we do see Holy Roman Empire players when they're going for a mine work with only like one or two vills. It's, no it's normally trending towards that Castle Age, but there's a lot of vills here on wood. And this is the next part that's kind of curious because this is this is a lot of vills on wood and now we see, see stone being taken. So two town centers going to be the play here. But uh, I think two two vills on, on the landmark, I guess this should be okay. Uh, he, he should be able to get this up in time. Uh, but interesting, going to TC, mine work. I think this is this is a nice concept, obviously, because one TC with Ark and Chapel, your, your focus is heavily on your economy. Here you've got more villagers. So, because ha of having more villagers, it means that you can't really ring them all around that. Um, you can't ring them around that Arkham Chapel as easily. Uh, so, I think this makes a lot of sense to be doing. And obviously, there's a lot of good technologies available to you as the Holy Roman Empire through the Mindwork Palace. There's two new technologies that are available. They are unique technologies, and they are only available in the Mindwork. If you go for the Arkham Chapel, you're not going to have access to them. And they're pretty big, right? Like, you've got plus two armor to your knights. That is, like, all armor. That's ranged armor. That's melee armor. And then you've also got plus two melee armor to your spears and horsemen in a single tech. So there's a lot of uh, a lot of good things going for you. But let's talk about this new tech. We've talked about it before. Fertile Crescent. There it is. A hundred resources. Reduces the cost of economic buildings and houses by 25%. That's a huge amount. It takes the cost of a town center from 750 resources down to 560 resources. After one town center, the tech is easily paid for itself and for fresh foodstuffs that's exactly what he's looking for here so he's going to pick up triple technology take a look at this we've it's rare that we see the triple banger coming out but we do indeed see it today so we've got fresh foodstuffs we've got wheelbarrow and we've got fertile crescent all coming through right now for anatand now there's a couple of other uses for this that i don't think people have really cracked onto just yet so number one it reduces the cost of houses and economic buildings like your lumber camps and whatnot 
So, I propose that you could be looking for a very fast second town center, but also a very fast Golden Age timing. Golden Age Tier 2 I'm talking about, because you've got that reduced cost of buildings, so it means that you can look to hit that a little bit faster. But there's the second town center coming up at 5 minutes 15. It's got a beautiful spawn back here, Enetand. So I'm going to be taking the, the far deer hunt. This is the far one. Closer one, obviously, spawning just outside the berry bush. But, uh, yeah, beautiful little opening. And I think the question is, does he look for a castle age here? Because I probably would be looking for a castle age and look to try and kill them with a, with a Burgrave. I think that should be possible. The main issue that you're going to have are camels. If your enemy does look to play a camel defense, how do you deal with that? I guess you could go for something like a mangonel, forward mangonel. That, that could be an option. You could look to mix in horsemen, but even then you're up against camels and horsemen have that camel unease, which is going to be reducing the damage that your horsemen are putting out. But it looks like it's going to be a barracks defense. No, no, no. I take it back. It's going to be an archery range defense, ladies and gentlemen. I think we might have a camel archer defense coming in right here. So Saint definitely in the right direction. And look at this. We've got double stable getting thrown down. So the archery range going to get met with the double stable. Interesting that he decided to cancel. He was going with a barracks. And now we get the barracks. So it's the, the double cancel coming through. Uh, so he does look to go for a barracks. So to me, this this early double... Oh, look at this. Look at this. He's, he's playing games with him, I reckon. Does he know? I don't think he knows. I think he's just having second thoughts. And is this the level of metagames that these guys are on, right? Like, it's like, I make a stable. It's like, hmm. He's going to make an archery range to counter me. I'm going to make a second stable. So he thinks I'm going all in. So he cancels the archery range and then builds a barracks. And then he cancels the stable and he's like, actually, I'm not going all in. Is that the level that these guys are on? Because it probably could be. And now we see the stable coming down as a response. I think that makes sense. Makes a lot of sense. Now, one of the things to note is he's not really playing into his strengths here. I say that. And now I now we've got the 1-1-1. One, one, one. GUA would be proud right here. We've got one stable, one archery range, and one barracks all coming in here. In the Feudal Age. So not going to be looking for a Castle Age. At least not yet. Might be looking for some more upgrades. And we do see Survival Techniques is coming through now. On the other side of the map, we do indeed have the 1-1-1 coming out for both of these guys. I love that they are just responding in this manner. And of course, Anatan is going to come through. He's going to confirm. Uh, now, uh, Anatan will be able to spot these production buildings out. Spearman going to be able to ward off this scout. He's going to be careful though. He could lose the scout. If he pops, pops the... Uh, the Vills in the town center, he would have definitely taken it out, but uh, I guess today likes to be a little bit passive. Spots out the enemy scout here as well. Still making his move through. You know, I hate it when there's a lull in the music. I'm like, excuse me? Where is our music? We need we need more music. How many prelates we got out in the moment? Two prelates at the moment. One in the wood line, one over on the deers on the west side. And down on the south side of the map, do we see any sign of a another town center? And it's not going to be the case. Very curious decision by Saints not to go for more than two TC, two TCs, especially when they're so cheap for the Holy Ro or for the uh, the Abbasid Dynasty, right? Like, there's a lot going for you because you're reducing the cost of your town center. So it means that, and I think that's what is so so strong about this technology, is that you're reducing the amount that you need to invest. So the upfront costs are lower, and because the upfront costs are lower, it means that you can spend more resources elsewhere. And it just, it, it makes so much sense. And it's just, it, it's very difficult for me to reconcile with the fact that Abbasid is just going to be a middle of the pack civilization after this. I do think with Fertile Crescent, the change, that there is, is a serious potential that Abbasid goes to S tier just because of that Fertile Crescent change. It gives them so much added flexibility. They can add in one TC like we see right now. And they've still, they're still up, right? Like they're still up 100, 150 resources. 100 resources, maybe they're still up. And obviously, the more TCs they add, the more resources they go up. But now Saint's going to be pushing out. Nice little composition. Archers, spears, horsemen. He's looking a little bit like an AI right now. I've been playing against the AI quite a fair bit. You guys would have seen. This is the exact composition that they'd look to be playing with. Exactly like the, the way that they're moving their units, is, or that he's using, moving the units as well. Is he playing against an AI? Is Saint's just an AI? It could be. It could be the case. And now Anatan trying to hit the hit castle edge, but the timing from Saint is perfect. Looking to put on the pressure early. A few more units rallying across the map. And it's going to be a Regnitz that he goes for. Instead of going for that Burgrave, he goes for a Regnitz. And I think that's kind of smart, right? Like, we talked about it before. If you do go into a Burgrave, it's very easy to defend with the Abbasid. He throws down two more archery ranges, pumps out camels, does two rounds, and that's it. He, he's defended. But 
If you go for the Regnitz, then there's still that pressure in the mid game, still that pressure in, in the late game as well, because that gold is just going to be trickling in. But have a look at the triple relic spawn over here. One, two, three. These guys are all really close to the enemy. Maybe that's just because Saint has expanded towards the middle of the map, so it seems a lot closer. But we do have a bit of a battle beginning to unfold on the north side of the map. Archer's looking to tee off towards some of those horsemen, but you can just see the men at arms getting cleaned up completely here. Still falling back. Have we picked up any of the unique techs? Not quite just yet. And I suspect it's going to be knights coming out from Enetan, and indeed it is. One knight on the way. Relic's getting picked up as well. First one on the way in towards that Regnitz, and a little bit of an attack up towards the gold vein as well. Nice little cleanup though. Enetan in a little bit of trouble. And Saint's definitely looking to push the issue early on in this game towards Sanchez's base. And now he's thinking of going castle himself. Six vils on gold. Nice little camel spearman defense back down here. Just puts on enough pressure that he's able to take out units, able to put on pressure onto the gold mine. Not really commit to an attack. And I think that's definitely the, the, the right play. You don't want to kill your enemy. You don't want to... Well, hold on, hold on, Drogo. Don't, don't, don't say that too loudly. YouTube might demonetize you. Look, you don't want to eliminate your enemy. Um, What, what you want to... You know, you, you just want to kind of play it a little bit passively but at the same time you want to do damage horseman gonna be able to clean up these archers a single knight in here also gonna be able to take out a horseman for its for their trouble look at the mass still building here from saint it's gonna take a while before enerton's really on his feet now has has uh saint actually picked up the upgrade for spears indeed he has so he's got the phalanx upgrade which means more range on those spears more damage gonna be coming out Saint's definitely in a increasingly good spot. Remember, he's got the two town centers and he's paying less for the villagers, which means that his timing... And look at the way that he's working towards the middle of the map. It's very aggressive from Saint to do this. So far, one relic picked up. Prelate over towards the west side of the map. Another one over towards the east. There's the second pre the second relic, rather, is coming through now. And these, uh, these villagers going for a bit of a walk. Everyone's going to have to evacuate for the moment, though, as the lumber camp gets thrown down on the other side. And it definitely feels like, where is Anatan's army? He's just had a distinct lack of production, and you can't say the same for his opponent. Saint has just got so much production here. Two stables, two barracks, one archery range. So five production buildings against three. But I, feel, I can't help but feel like that's probably not the main difference here. The knight's going to be coming out. These guys should be able to clean this up, but we've still got a, we've still got a big attack behind... I mean, this, this is just such great multitasking coming out from Saints. You know, we've talked before about the 111 with GUA. Well, let's talk a little bit about multitasking for GUA because GUA was known as the multitasker. And it looks like Saints might actually be... I wouldn't be surprised if, if Saints was GUA. I'll say that much. He's playing very well. Spears moving forward. Looking to try and take out these knights. The same time the knights trying to take out the horsemen, trying to take out the, the archers. Everyone's just... Everyone's running towards somebody else. And as a result, we're all running from each other. That was a metaphor for life. Maybe we've got to start running towards each other. Hey, guys. Exactly. Exactly. Spears out. No plus one melee just yet. We'll switch it away from the uh, the villagers to the income. And Anatan on 75 food a minute. I tell you what. That's probably not the... Um, 61 food a minute. Probably not the amount of food that you want. And look at these annoying units behind the enemy base. Just parked here. Saint just doing absolute God's work behind here. Really nice stuff from him. Relic coming up towards his top side, though. Going to be thrown in an outpost. Undoubtedly going to be looking to put in an, an emplacement, maybe a spring on emplacement. And more units going to expose themselves up towards the north. But look, at the same time that he exposes himself on the north side, more units coming in on the south. And still Saint not going castle just yet. Really happy to just play it out in the feudal age. And I think that's kind of crazy, right? Like, outpost does get cancelled. Just the fact that he's able to, to play this heavily in the Feudal Age against a Castle Age opponent. I think it's just a credit to the Abbasid Dynasty as well. Despite not having access to things like... Or not really looking at the camels. Obviously, he's got access to them and they've come out onto the field now. But he hasn't really gone for them. This is the first camel that's going to get some action this game. I think the main thing for me... Is just that, that he's able to deal so easily with the Knights. And I think that's only just because of his production, right? Like, he, he's just had really good production. That has definitely been the theme here. We do see more production now coming up. Two Raxes, Archery Rangers, two Stables. Actually, I take it back. There's, there's still only five production buildings. 
I guess he's just he's just really producing a lot of units. And I think that that's I mean that that is a pretty big that is a big skill. Let's just say that much. Military wing going to be coming up now for Sanch. Just holding out his opponent. I mean, this gold vein not being mined. I guess he's got gold coming through from relics and we're up to three relics now, I think. That's two. There's the third one on the way in. Stone wall's going to be coming up. Look at this. Anatand. He is backed into a corner. He does not like this either. So Saint's doing a really good job just to just to be annoying. Riding on board Anatan's perspective. Look at this. He is so... Oh, this is such a tough spot. Down 10 villagers at the moment, obviously. Look at, look at the production uptime or, or the villager uptime from both of these guys. Absolutely perfect. And now Knight's going to be moving out. He's going to be looking to try and pick off some villagers. A couple of options for him. The gold on the backside. Of course, Barry's always going to be a great option as well. Probably just want to send one or two knights down here. Don't want to send all of them down. It looks like those knights are going to be coming back. And he's fearful about engaging into this. And I would be as well. The main thing that you've got to worry about is that camel. It's providing that camel unease. A 20% reduction in damage. That's a huge amount of damage that you're losing out. So where where is the production coming out right now for Anatan? Okay, there it is. Double stable, double archery range. This makes a bit more sense. It's weird to see archers on the Holy Roman Empire, but he is going to push forward. The knight numbers are good here. He will lose quite a few if he looks to try and take the fight now, especially with the age up coming through. He needs to try and go right now. And that's exactly what he's going to do. Knight's coming around, do a nice little swing. Beautiful micro coming through from Anatan right there. Going to put himself between the spears and the knights with the archers. Beautifully done. Now looking to focus down the enemy uh, spears and just an absolute cleanup. He's barely lost any units. Look at all the red that's on the ground right now. Wonderful cleanup from Anatan. Swings it around. I don't see a single blue unit that died right there. Anatan demonstrating some of the best micro I've seen in a long time in this game. Very well done right there. But it's not over just yet. Sanch. He's lost a few units. He ain't even mad. Upgrades now coming through. Veteran camel archers, veteran horsemen, veteran spearmen, all on the way in. There they are. So now we've got that extra little bit of health, extra little bit of damage. And look at the base. Look at the, the size of the base coming out right now from Sanch. I tell you what, Sanch is playing very methodical here. Camel archer coming out. Now there should be camel riders on the field as well. Where are those camel riders? Look at, look at the amount of units that are coming out. Villagers were moving forward. I think he might have been going for a keep. That's an, a lot of bills. Indeed, he was going for a keep. The knights, they're going to be the only thing that is standing between this uh, this keep and all of those horsemen. But it's looking like Enetan might actually have to fall back from this, even though he pulled out that beautiful micro earlier. Now the villagers are going to get taken out. Knights are trying their best to defend. But remember, these aren't just any kind of spears. These are... Abbasid Dynasty Spears. They've got that extra range on them. Look at the units that are coming in right now from Saint. Who is this guy? And now all of a sudden, he's got the Camel Unease to deal with. Camel's getting in behind there. It's an absolute cleanup. It's a good game. Getting called right there. Anatan losing against Saint. I'm going to have to do some research. Who is this Saint guy? That was impressive play right there. So many units coming out from the Abbasid Dynasty. It just never stopped. Anyway, fellas, I hope you guys enjoyed the casted game. And of course, we'll catch you guys in the next one. Thank you for watching.